Today's video is brought to you by Squarespace, the all-in-one online platform for creatives. So the 672 has been my go-to camera for the past like three to four years now. I still love it, but recently I picked up an older 6x7 mirror lockup body just as like a backup, something I didn't have to worry about as much. But after using it for a few months now, I figured it'd be helpful to do a video just talking about my experience with both of these, uh, just in hopes of helping you make a decision if you're interested in purchasing one of these cameras and trying to decide if the 672 is worth the extra money. So if you've looked into these cameras, you'll know that the 672 is quite a bit more expensive than the older versions. Uh, right now, I think it goes for like $3,000 US somewhere around there with a metered prism and with no lens. Uh, whereas you can pick up one of these older models for definitely under $1,000 with a lens and a metered prism. So quite a gap uh, between the two. And what's been interesting is as I've used this older version over the last few months, it's actually surprised me how much I've enjoyed it. So a couple things have stood out to me. I'm gonna talk about four specific categories today, four details uh, that I think kind of like separate or are the biggest difference between these two models. Okay, we're gonna start by looking at the different options for shooting modes. So the 672 is definitely a more feature filled camera. And one of the biggest kind of standout things is just this uh, automatic aperture priority mode. And obviously the six by seven doesn't have that. So you're just, it's a fully manual camera. You have shutter speed and aperture uh, to control your exposure. So what's nice on the 672, and this is almost how I always use the camera, uh, is I would just put it in this A mode, then you have exposure compensation. Uh, and then, you know, you combine that with the accuracy of the meter and you just have this like really portable, flexible camera that feels like a traditional 35 mil SLR, uh, other than the size of it, <laughs> obviously. But another thing that kind of comes with that, and this is also something that I never thought about when I picked up the older version, is just when you're in this automatic mode on the 672, the camera will actually select half stop shutter speeds when it's determining your exposure. So instead of being limited to like 1 1 25th or 60th or 30th, uh, the camera will go to like uh, a 45th, a 90th and things like that. So it's just a way to say, if you're shooting like a portrait and you wanna stay wide open, while well, the camera will give you this flexibility with those half stop adjustments to fine tune your exposure. Whereas with the older model, you're just stuck with full stop shutter speed adjustment. So, you know, how much this matters is really gonna come down to uh, the type of work you create. So for me, it's not like a huge deal just because I do a lot of landscapes. I can get away with those full stop adjustments often. But uh, yeah, you know, if you do portrait work, if you wanna fine tune your exposure a little bit, it is just important to keep that in mind that with the older version, you're only gonna have your aperture to get those half stops, the shutter speed are full. 672, as long as you're in that automatic mode, it will give you half stop adjustments. So the next point that I wanna talk about is just different metering modes. So one of the big things when the 672 was released was this upgraded AE meter. So it has three different metering modes, whereas the uh, older 6x7 is just like your standard center weighted meter, which you'd find in a lot of other cameras and a lot of other prisms. So this really appealed to me when I was making my like initial decision on which one of these cameras I wanted to buy. Uh, but the funny thing is, is like long term, I found that like 90% of the time I'd say I'm almost always just leaving it in the center weighted mode and I found it to be very accurate as is. So I almost don't have a use for the other modes now because uh, the center weighted one works so well. But it is still nice to have those options. For me personally, I'm not a huge fan of spot meters built into uh, cameras. If I'm gonna use a spot meter, I'd rather just use my handheld one, which has a nice kind of narrow one degree angle on it. But it still is nice to have that option. And again, this is gonna come down to the type of work you create and also what your personal preference is. So if you like to have those options, the 672 is a definite upgrade, but I've actually been quite happy so far with the 6x7 uh, and the center weighted accuracy in this camera. Okay, so next up, we're gonna talk about the differences with the viewfinders. And this is actually the most surprising thing for me with these. Um, but before we do that, I just wanna take a minute here to talk about the sponsor of today's video, which is Squarespace. 
I've been using Squarespace for a few years now just for my different creative businesses and I've always enjoyed the flexibility and also how much time it saves me. I like the fact that they have a bunch of different templates so I can use it for something like a portfolio website to display my work, but then I can also use it for other creative websites like I did for my podcast where I have episode pages. I also have an online store. So it really gives me this platform that I can use in a number of different ways to suit my different creative projects. So check out squarespace.com today for your free trial. And when you're ready to launch, you can use the link at squarespace.com slash Kyle McDougall for 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. Okay, let's jump into talking about the viewfinders. So if you've read comparisons, uh, one of the things that I often found was people just raving about how much nicer the viewfinder on the 672 is to use. And what's interesting is I've always found this to be like okay to work with, but I always expected, you know, with it being a six by seven camera that the viewfinder was gonna be like the best of the best when you looked through it, just this massive image. But I actually find, uh, you know, something like my Contax RTS, which is a 35 mil camera to be quite a bit nicer to look through. The image is quite a bit uh, bigger. So when I picked up the six by seven, I kind of just expected that it was gonna be a lot worse. And it is definitely not as bright, the viewfinder image, but I found it to be a lot larger and I don't know why that is. Uh, with the 672, it's almost like you're looking kind of down this tunnel at the image, whereas uh, the 6x7 seems just a lot larger and like it fills the frames. So the only thing I can think of is maybe just with the 672 having a bit more of like a complex meter, those different modes, maybe there's less space. Uh, I'm not sure. All I know is that the meter on this camera is kind of what I always expected when I first picked up the 672, just in terms of how large it is. So. For me, it's quite a bit nicer to use. I will say though, the one nice thing about the 672 is it does have a digital readout at the bottom. So it tells you your shutter speed and it has like a little exposure bar. Whereas this is just like an old school needle system for the meter and that's it. Last but not least, I'm gonna talk about the ergonomics and the handling. So this was actually one of the things that led me to the 672 in the first place is just the right hand grip. And if you watch my original review, I talk a lot about that. And yes, uh, this camera is definitely nicer to handhold, a little bit more ergonomic, a little bit lighter. But again, when I first got the older 6x7, I will say uh, that it surprised me how much I didn't miss that right hand grip. I thought I was gonna hate it quite a bit and that it was gonna bug me, uh, but it's been fine to work with. And you can buy like custom made wooden grips for these cameras. I don't even think I would do that. I feel like I've adjusted to this quite well uh, and it's not as big of a deal as I thought it was gonna be in the first place. Uh, then what's also nice because it doesn't have that grip is you get two of your strap lug, uh, strap lug attachments on the top here, uh, like a normal camera. So then you can basically sling this camera from your neck uh, horizontally, whereas with the 672, you basically just have these two lugs, so it's always kind of hanging this way. Again, not a huge deal, but it is kind of a nice little feature to have those up here where you're kind of most used to them. But beyond that, there is one more thing I want to talk about, and this has no impact on like the performance or usability, and maybe it wouldn't even sway your decision. It might not even sway mine, but I want to mention it. And that is just like the feel of the older 6x7. So this is made out of metal and brass. It just feels like a tank. It's a little bit heavier, yes, but it kind of just represents everything that I love about these older classic film cameras. Whereas, you know, the newer 672, it almost feels and looks like just like an oversized digital camera, you know, being built in 1999. It's obviously a lot newer. And there's you know, nothing wrong with the quality. Obviously this is still a super durable camera. Uh, and you might think that this is crazy to mention this, but there is just something about that older camera. And when I first got my hands on it, it kind of brought this very like familiar feel with it that I've grown to love with these older classic cameras. <laughs> Okay, so that wraps up my thoughts. Obviously very similar being the exact same camera, just different models, but there are some significant differences that I think are worth talking about and that'll hopefully help you make a decision if you're trying to pick which one of these is best for you. Uh, for me moving forward, I am still undecided what I'm gonna do. The temptation is there to just stick with this older model. Like I said, I am shooting a lot more four x five and I've enjoyed this one quite a bit. So I think I'll give it maybe a couple more months, make up my mind and see where I go from there. But anyways, hope you enjoyed this. If you have experience with either one of those, leave a comment below. Let me know how you feel about it. 
Other than that, just want to say thank you, appreciate all the support, all that kind of stuff, and I'll talk to you soon. Thank you.